welcome and Merry Christmas to you and your families. We are so happy that you are joining us this morning. I hope you had an incredible Christmas, that you got to open some really great gifts, and that you're enjoying your time with your family. Thank you so much for going to our website and watching this video. Before uh, we get started into the sermon, we actually have Pastor Justin here with us, and uh, we're just going to say a prayer and then sing one worship song, and we'll get right into the Word. So if you don't mind, pray with me right there in your home, right there in your family. Let's just invite the Spirit of the Lord to speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for this time, God, and we recognize that you really are a good Father to us. God, we just recognize that your presence is here with us, that your name is Emmanuel, God with us. And Father, we just thank you that as we gather in our homes, Father, as we gather with our friends or with our family, Jesus, that you would open up our hearts to your word, that you would open up our eyes to see in a way that we've never seen before. God, that as we look into 2017, Jesus, that you would open up the eyes of our heart, God, that you would flood us with light so that we can see things for how they actually are, so that we could see not only what you're doing inside of us, but where you're taking us. In Jesus' name, amen. And oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone You're a good, good father, it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers. So far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To You are perfect in all of your ways. You're so perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're so perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us and it's a love so undeniable 
simple life Can yeah. oh, hardly speak in peace So unexplainable life Can yeah. oh, hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you it's who I am It's who I am It's who I am You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am to Father, we just thank you that you really are our good Father and that no matter where our relationship is with you, God, as we watch this video, that you're still calling us deeper still. You're calling us deeper still, God. You're calling us to a deeper understanding, a closer walk a new ability and a clearer ability to hear your voice, to see your workings, to see your ways happening in the world around us. Jesus, we just thank you that you're, you're touching our eyes so that we can see clearly. You're moving in our hearts so that we can hear you better, so that we can see you better. And we thank you, God, that what you started inside of us you're going to finish. You'll bring it about to completion. That you don't quit on us, that you don't stop, that you don't abandon us because you're a good father. You're there, God, and you're faithful even when we're unfaithful. You remain faithful. Even when we have deception and, and act contrary to how we feel you've made us, Lord, your grace and your mercy still call out to us. And so as we gather with our families, as we gather, Lord, we gather with grateful hearts, with thankfulness, with excitement and anticipation because of you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Justin. Um, you know, Victory, what I love about you and what I love about what God is doing in you and through you is God has called Victory to be a people a vision. He's called us to be a people that not just uh, see into the future of where God is taking us, but how we're going to get there. And also not just how we're going to get there, but how we interpret the world around us. And I really believe that this year that God has called us to see with new eyes, that he's called us to see with eyes of hope, with eyes of faith, and with eyes of love. But in order for us to do this, we have to be able to see clearly. You know, in Matthew 6, it says, Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. And I just think it's so interesting that when Jesus said that your eye is a lamp, your eye is a lamp. And I think that's a really powerful statement because it, the lamp, is, it provides light. And your eye provides light that we use to interpret the world around us. And when it says that if your eye is bad, it's not necessarily talking about, you know, looking at bad things or, you know, being a greedy person or being a lustful person or something like that. It's just talking about a bad eye is an eye that can't take in light. And when we're unable to take in light, then we misinterpret the world around us. We misinterpret events around us. I understand that as you gather that um, probably your situation, your family, nobody has it perfectly. 
there's always areas in our life that we're saying, man, if I just had a breakthrough in this area, if I just had this relationship a little bit better, if we just weren't struggling so much financially, or if I just had this next home or this next job lined out perfectly. But when we have the light of Christ inside of our hearts, it causes us to reinterpret the events around us. But if our eye is bad and we're unable to take in that light, then we misinterpret events. And so instead of interpreting a, a job challenge or a financial challenge or a relationship challenge in the light of Christ, which is filled with hope, which is filled with love, which is filled with peace, then we misinterpret and we interpret in the light of darkness. And the light of darkness looks like fear, looks like intimidation, it looks like hopelessness, it looks like anger, it looks like deception, and it causes us to misinterpret life's events. One of my favorite stories, and I, I use it pretty often, is the story of Peter. When Peter saw Jesus walking out on the water to them, and he called out to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, if that's really you, call to me, and I'm going to walk out to you. I just love how that's Peter's idea. Good job, Peter. That's a really interesting statement of faith there. But he calls out to Peter and says, come on then. Come on then, if that's what you want. And to begin with, Peter's walking on the water. He's, he's doing the unthinkable. I imagine the other disciples were freaking out, looking at what's going on with Peter. But as soon as Peter removed his eyes, as soon as he unfixed his eyes and fixed them on the events around us, then he began to lose power out of himself. And instead of walking on the water, instead of walking in a place of miracle and power the way we're all designed to, he, be he began to sink. And when our eyes are bad and we're not getting the light that Jesus has for us inside of us, and we begin to focus on maybe the wind, we begin to focus on the waves. And what's interesting about that is the wind was real, those waves were real, the storm is real. And so it's not like we can just sit into this place and be like, well, it's not happening. These, these events that are happening, these circumstances, they're not real. We can't just live in a, in a fairy tale land. But the fact was that the wind was real. You know, these threats were real. But the problem happened whenever he began to focus so much on the facts that he lost the truth. And the truth was that as long as his eyes stayed fixed on Jesus, then light was flooding into his heart. Light was flooding into his life, and it gave him the power to walk on the water. In Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this. We do this. Now, this is an important part because God's not just saying, hey, run this race, have endurance, know what your end goal is, but He tells us exactly how to do it. He says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion, I love that, the champion. He is our champion who initiates and perfects our faith. You know, you didn't start the faith that's inside of you. That faith to believe for the dream, you can't say, hey, that came from me. It didn't come from you. It hasn't come from me. The dreams that God has put in our heart, God has put there. The dreams that he's put over this spiritual family, God has put there. And he is the champion who's not only starting those dreams, but perfecting those dreams. He's perfecting that faith. And I believe that this year that God wants to show you some things that you haven't seen before. He wants, you, he wants to show you some, uh, some ways that you're made. He wants to show you a destination. He wants to show you some destiny that is tied into how He made you that you've never seen before. But He's such a good Father that He just doesn't show us where to go, but He'll show us every step along the way as long as, as long as our eyes are fixed on Him. Victory, we are here to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. There is a unique God expression that He wants to show Himself through your life, through your situation, through your story. And don't say, well, that might happen with other people, but that's not made for you. It is made for you. That's how you're designed. But we've got to have eyes of hope. We've got to have eyes of faith, and we have to have eyes of love. Ephesians 1, 18 says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people 
who are his rich and glorious inheritance. One of my favorite things that we do every January that we're starting off again is we're going to start with prayer, fasting, and vision. And the reason that we do this is we want to start this year off right. We want to start this year with eyes that are flooded with light. We want to start this year with hearts that are flooded with light. We want to see clearly. We want to hear where God is taking us. We want to allow Him and give Him permission. Say, hey Jesus, anything in my heart that you want to clear up, that you want to clean up, that you want to get straight, move in me. I love what Jesus said when people were questioning about what authority He had to do these miracles, to heal on the Sabbath, to open blind eyes, which is something no one had ever done before Jesus. And this is what he said. He said, I only do what I see my Father doing. And so 2017, this is going to be a year of breakthrough for you, Victory. There's some things that you're going to look back this time next year, and you're going to say, it is incredible to see what our good Father has done through my life and through your life. But that's going to happen as we have clean hearts, as we have clear eyes, as we look intensely into the face of Jesus and we move forward confidently. And that's what prayer and fasting does, is it lays ourselves open. And so we're going to start January 2nd, we're going to go through the 22nd, and we're going to say, God, we are here for you. We're going to start with worship. We're going to come, because guess what, Victory? We're worshipers first. And in our values, His presence is number one. His presence is our first priority. And so that's how we're going to start this year off. And as we do this, I just believe that we're going to see Jesus more clearly than we ever have before. In 1 John 4, it says, The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. That's John 1, 4. And what's so incredible about that statement is the fact that His life brings light. His life brings light to our bodies. The closer we walk with Him, the more light that we're able to use to interpret the world around us. And as people of God, as Christians, as followers of Christ, it's really important that we be a people of vision. And victory, God has called you to be a people of vision. And so I just want to pray for us, and I just want to bless you. I want to bless your family that this year you're going to have eyes of hope. This year you're going to have eyes of faith. This year you're going to have eyes of love. Would you pray with me now? Father, I just thank you for every person watching this video right now. God, whether they're surrounded by family and friends, or maybe they're watching it by themselves right now. God, I just pray that you would help us all realize that we're never alone, that there's a good, good Father, and that one of His first characteristics is that He is a rewarder, and He rewards those who seek Him. You know, if you're watching this video and you've never given your life to Jesus, then we need to stop right where we're at. And I really, I really want you to just be challenged. I want you to look inside of your heart right now. And I want you to decide, are you ready? Are you ready to surrender your life to Christ? You know, it's more than a prayer. It's something that we say, Jesus, I, don't, I, can't, I can't count on myself to save myself. I can't count on my own righteousness. I need your grace and I need your life in my, light, in my life. And I need your life to provide light for me to interpret the world around us. If, if you've never said that, if you, uh, maybe you were a Christian at one point and you really feel like your life is just turned away from Him, would you pray with me now just real quickly? Father, I just thank you for every person that's watching this. And God, that those people that would say, I really don't have a relationship with Jesus. But as I've been talking, or maybe it was in worship with Pastor Justin, that their hearts just became convicted. This is, I really want a real relationship. I just, I just don't want to be a church attender, or I don't want to just go through the motions, but I want the life and the light of Jesus to be in my heart, to guide not only my steps today, but guide my future. Lord, I just invite you into my life. I surrender to you, not just as my Savior, but as my Lord. I receive into my heart your Spirit, that makes me alive, that makes me a new creation, that floods my heart with light and life. And Lord, I just thank you that inside of me is a treasure that you put there. And as I walk closer to you, Jesus, you're going to unlock that treasure. And that treasure is going to bring hope and life to other people because it it's, pleases you to do it this way, Father. We love you, God, and we thank you for everything you're doing in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Victory. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
Thank you for gathering in your homes. Thank you for attending our Christmas Eve service last night. And I just pray and I believe and I speak over you that this year you're going to see with new eyes. This year you're not going to interpret life events through bad or dark eyes, but your eyes are going to be flooded with light. And as they're flooded with light, hope is going to arise in your mind. Faith is being stirred in your hearts. You're going to do things that you never thought possible because of Christ in you. We love you so much. God bless you and God bless your family.